Hello everyone, got four dirty jokes for you today. So a blonde enters a barber shop and the barber whispers to his customer. This is the dumbest blonde in the world. Watch while I prove it to you. The barber puts a dollar bill in one hand and two quarters in the other, then calls the blonde over and asks, Which do you want? The blonde takes the quarters and leaves. What did I tell you? said the barber. That blonde never learns. Later, when the customer leaves, he sees the same blonde coming out of the ice cream parlor. Hey there, may I ask you a question? Why did you take the quarters instead of the dollar bill? The blonde licked her cone and replied, Because the day I take the dollar the game is over. <laughs> One evening, a man finds himself driving home from a wild and hilarious firefighter party. The party was so much fun that he had a few more drinks than he should have, making him a bit tipsy. Knowing that he needs to be cautious to avoid catching the attention of any vigilant police officers, he decides to drive extra carefully. However, Despite his efforts, luck is not on his side, and he ends up running into a police patrol. The flashing lights of the patrol car illuminate the road, causing the man's heart to race as he prepares to face the consequences of his intoxicated state. The police officer steps out of the car and approaches the man, asking sternly, And where do you come from? Realizing that honesty may be his best option, the man replies, I'm driving home from a firefighter party. Yes, I must admit, I'm a little loaded, and I apologize for any inconvenience caused. The policeman interrupts him with a friendly smile, saying, I know, I know, my friend. I've been to a few of those parties myself. Tell you what, just give me two cigarettes, and I haven't seen you tonight. Relieved and grateful for the officer's understanding, the man reaches into his pocket and hands the cop two cigarettes, thanking him for his leniency. With a nod, the policeman allows him to continue on his way. Feeling a mixture of relief and caution, the man resumes his journey, driving attentively and hoping to reach home without any further encounters. However, fate has other plans for him. Just ten minutes later, he finds himself face to face with another police patrol, his heart sinking at the sight. The second policeman steps out of the car, mirroring the previous officer's inquisitive gaze, and asks, And where do you come from? Taking a deep breath, the man responds, I'm driving home from a firefighter party. Yes, I admit, I've had a few drinks, and I apologize for any inconvenience caused. Like deja vu, the policeman interrupts him with a knowing smile, saying, I know, I know, my friend. I've attended a few of those parties myself. Give me two cigarettes, and I haven't seen you tonight. Slightly astonished but relieved that his story seems to be working, the man reaches into his pocket and hands the officer two cigarettes, expressing his gratitude for the officer's understanding. With a friendly pat on the back, the policeman allows him to continue his journey. Feeling a mixture of disbelief and amusement, the man wonders if lightning can strike twice. However, just as he starts to relax, his heart skips a beat as he finds himself encountering yet another police patrol. This time, it's the third and final patrol he encounters that night. The third policeman steps out of the car, wearing a curious expression on his face, and asks, And where do you come from? With a sigh, the man replies, I'm driving home from a firefighter party. Yes, I must admit, I'm a bit loaded, and I apologize for any inconvenience caused. Before he can finish his sentence, the policeman interrupts him, wearing a wide grin, and says, I know, I know, my friend. I'm quite fond of those parties myself. Just give me two cigarettes, and I haven't seen you tonight. The man, feeling a mix of relief and frustration, responds, I'm sorry, officer, 
but your colleague took the last two cigarettes I had. Amused by the unexpected twist, the policeman chuckles and says, well, then it's about time you get out of the roundabout and drive home. <laughs> So a frog needs a loan, so he hops into a bank. He hops right up to the window and notices a teller sitting behind it wearing thick glasses and a name tag that reads Patty. Hi Patty, how are you today? I'm in need of a loan. A loan? She replies. Yes, for a lilypad. Says the frog. Visibly confused, Patty takes a moment and says, Well, sir, what is your name? Kermit, says the frog. Scoffing in disbelief, Patty scolds the frog. That can't possibly be your name. You look nothing like Kermit. Well, I'm actually named after the famous frog you know as Kermit. The truth is, my father is Mick Jagger. He fell in love with a frog on one of his tours in France, and they screwed and well, I'm their offspring, says Kermit Kami. Even if this farce is true, you have no banking history, no credit, absolutely nothing to prove to me that you can pay back a loan. Patty pauses for a moment to collect herself. Do you have any collateral? She asks. Kermit pauses and reaches down into one of his frog pockets and pulls out a small, shiny, pink elephant and hands it to Patty. She looks at it for a moment and says, Well, I don't know what this is supposed to be. I'm not sure it's worth anything at all, let alone enough to cover collateral for a loan on a lilypad. If you would give me just a moment, I need to speak with my manager, sir. Kermit obliges and she begins towards her manager's door. She opens it and he says, Ah, missus. Whack, how are you today? I was having a great day until about ten minutes ago. She replies, there's a frog named Kermit out there and he needs a loan for a lilypad. He's offered this as collateral and I'm sure it's worthless but I needed to ask you to be sure. Do you know what this is? She proceeds to hand the shiny, pink elephant over to her manager, who looks it over, pauses and says, This is a knick-knack, Patty Whack. Give the frog a loan. His old man was a rolling stone. <laughs> so the woodland animals built themselves a public toilet. All went well for the first couple of weeks, then one morning as the toilet committee were inspecting the toilet, they found that one of the windows was smashed. They asked all the animals what had happened, and the rabbit said, Last night the bear was taking a shit, and the toilet was out of paper, so he grabbed me and wiped his ass on my fur, and then threw me through the window. So the committee repaired the window and life went on as before. Then after another couple of weeks, there was another broken window. The committee asked all the animals what had happened, and the fox said, Last night the bear was taking a shit, and the toilet was out of paper, so he grabbed me and wiped his ass on my fur, and then threw me through the window. So the committee repaired the window and life went on as before. Then after another couple of weeks, the committee found the entire facility smashed to matchwood. They were dismayed at the wanton destruction, and they asked all the animals if they had any idea what had happened. I might know, said the hedgehog. <laughs>